welcome to day 20 of the Notes and Solutions for GCSE 5 a day. Hope you're enjoying them. Okay, so we start today with question one, and we're working out the total length <clears throat> of these three blocks. And you can see that we've got a, a model of them here where the three blocks, the length of each of them is shown. And we've got a question mark here to indicate what we're after and hopefully you will see that because we're working our way along to get from here to here we need to add these two together and then we need to add this one to get our total so hopefully you've recognized that this is an addition problem it involves some decimals so the key when we're adding decimals is to make sure that our columns line up and our decimal points line up and you'll see that I've I write these columns with a fair amount of distance in between them so there's no confusion as to which column is which 7 and 8 15 add 4 19 so that's a nine and a one over here. I need to make sure that I have a decimal point in the same column. Okay, so one and nine is 10, and eight is 18, and three, 18, 19, 20, 21. So one here, 21 there. So my answer, 21.9. Mustn't forget my units, centimeters. And if you want to try some more problems, like that some worded addition problems then go to century and try nugget 3.03 .03. okay question two and we have a number sequence and we're asked for the next the next term so this is the term here well let's see what the rule is going from one term to the other 12 13 14 15, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we can see that there's a gap of three between each one. So we're going to have another gap of three, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so our answer there is 24. And to go and practice that on century, 22.02 and 22.03. And this leads on to question three. So following on from question two, where we worked out that the next term was 24, and we'd seen that there was a, we were stepping in threes from one term in the sequence to the other. Now this is term one, term two, term three, term four, term five. And somewhere along here, if we get to any term n, there's a rule an nth term rule that describes everything in this sequence. Now, one element of this rule is that these numbers are going up in threes. Now, if we think about our three times table, then that's going up in threes, isn't it? So one, two, three, four, five, and, and if I wanted to think about what rule applies to this three times table, then it's 3n. Three times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, 3 times 4, 3 times 5. So my three times table is 3n. Now what I have in my sequence here is slightly different, isn't it? It's 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. And hopefully what you can see is that our sequence is nine bigger than the three times table at each step. So what describes this whole sequence is this rule 3n plus 9. Okay, so to go and practice that on century, Go to nugget 
zero seven. But a key thing here is that the the amount that we're stepping each time is the multiplier for Rn because that's what makes the three times table. Okay, now question four. Now I hope as many of you have heard me say in the past, percentages are just fractions. But they're fra special fractions because they're out of a hundred. So as long as we know what to do, what maths to do with fractions, then our percentages are sorted because they are just fractions. What we're asked to do here is expect express 20 as a fraction of ah, five pounds. So we've got pence and pounds here. So the first thing that we're going to do is to make these the same and we'll call that 500 pence. So as a fraction, we have 20 out of 500. And percentages are just fractions out of 100. So we need to have an equivalent fraction here where we are now expressing it out of 100. So with equivalent fractions, we need to do the same thing to the bottom and the top. What do I do getting from 500 to 100? Well, I divide by 5. Hopefully you can see that. To get from 100 to 500, we multiply by 5. So to get from 500 to 100, we do the inverse, dividing by 5. We need to do the same to the top. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So our fraction is 4 out of 100, which means that our percentage is 4. And if you want to do some similar exercises like, like this, which is turning one fraction into one with a denominator of 100, then the nugget to go to is 8.02, which would be a really useful nugget for you to do. Now, questions like this do come up in your mock exams and in your real exams. And students who, sp who do their five a day end up being able to answer these questions. And I'm not going to go into an enorm enormous amount of detail here because it's something that you can quite happily go away and practice on century. But if we have an equation of a line like this, y equals 0 0.8x plus 3, then the 3 here is where this line intercepts the y-axis, and the 0 0.8 is the gradient of our line and gradient gradient is how far up we've gone divided by how long we have gone so the gradient is 0 0.8 nuggets to help you understand what's going on there are 23.10 and the ones either side of that as well. I hope those notes were useful. Do keep doing your five a day and ask your teacher for help wherever necessary.